re really glad that we were able to play well tonight. And, and you know, I, I got a lot of respect for Coach Waterman and that program. And I know they, I mean, they've been on the road for four or five days, and I've watched all their games. And I, that's a really good team and a well-coached team. And I thought we had one of our better defensive performances, if not our best of the season. And that's why the game went the way it did. But as coaches, you really worry about these games uh, because of the timing. And then if you throw in some of the games that we just had, two really gut-wrenching losses where our guys were very, it was emotional games. Uh, and then with the break coming up, this was just a scary game. And uh, just proud of our guys, our coaching staff. Our coaching staff did a great job preparing our guys. And I thought our guys executed tonight. And, and um, you know, so fortunate that we were able to win. So harp on that. This was your opponent sees lower points with 50 points. So what do you think, what do you think went into that? Was it rebounding, the matchups, or? I think that you made a great point, the rebounding. Uh, this is a very good rebounding team. They're plus six on this season, uh, playing really good teams. I mean, they played Wake Forest, they played Penn State, they played Longwood twice, they beat Chicago State on the road. They're, they rebound the ball as well as any team we've played so far. It happens to be the last two teams we've played between Florida and that were very good offensive rebounding teams. Uh, we didn't do a very good job versus Florida. And to be quite honest with you, when you look at the numbers, uh, late in the game, I mean, they stacked up on offensive rebounds. They went to a big lineup. Um, I give them credit again, Coach Waterman. So he went with a big lineup, and it was effective them getting offensive rebounds. But I thought for the most part, we really emphasized defensive rebounding the last two days uh, since the Florida game. And I thought the way the game started, and particularly in the first half, I thought we did a pretty good job on the defensive rebounds. Three of 20 shooting from beyond the arc tonight. What did you feel like was working for your perimeter defense? Well, you know, they are a team that, you know, we going into the game, this is not a high three-point shooting team. Not that they don't have guys that can shoot it, but they're a unique team. They play in the mid-range, uh, which which I love. I mean, they do that. They shoot the mid-range not very well. They don't shoot a lot of threes, actually, from a volume perspective. They're towards the bottom, just in terms of how many they take. Um, but I still think we guarded the line pretty well because they ended up taking 20 of them. And to be able to – I think we've put a huge emphasis on contesting shots. And, um, you know, look, some nights you're going to contest, and they're still going to go in. But if you, you give yourself the best chance to defend that three-point line when you're active, uh, pressuring the ball, contesting shots, and without looking at the tape yet, I thought that we didn't give many open looks where it was just uncontested. And we, you know, we have given up some of those early in the season. How encouraging is it for the way Sears played? I know he came in and he had six straight points and just kind of does well defensively, but he's also shown some offensive ability. Yeah, that was huge. I thought the way he came in with that, with that offensive rebound, I really think offensive rebounding a lot of times is a barometer for how a guy, his readiness, his uh, uh, aggressiveness, RJ felt in the same thing. He just goes and gets those offensive rebounds, usually see it add up in the stat sheet with other areas that he plays well. And Sear gets that tip in the start, and the next thing you know, like you said, he scores a few possessions in a row. So uh, it's really big for us, uh, you know, and I thought he had a chance to do it again in the second half and it just didn't go his way and he fumbled the ball a couple times, but uh, love Sear. You know what Sear does every day? He shows up in here. He's the first guy or one of the very first guys in the gym getting ready for practice. And every morning he's working out. If we practice at eight, he's working out at seven. If we practice at nine, he's working out. So he puts the time in and I think we're seeing it. I think, I think us coaches were seeing it, his teammate, are seeing it, and you just have great respect for guys that, that put it in the books like that, the way he works. Coach, to harp on what he said about Sear, how do you balance having a big lineup with the three bigs, Sear, Brandon, and Ezra, and then you started a three-guard lineup with Bobby, RJ, and Cam? Yeah, you know, uh, every coach would love to have a lineup that you say, hey, we're staying with this the whole time. But Cam just gets eligible. So we have Cam all of a sudden back, and you're playing Florida, we really didn't, weren't 100% sure until going into that game, okay, what was going to happen. He plays, Sear starts, thought they did a good, Sear did a great job. He got off to a little bit of a rough start, but then played really well, especially in the second half. Now you go up against this team, and this is the first time all season we face a team that's going to play 50% zone. And so I don't think it's the smartest to line up Sear, Brandon, and Ezra versus a team that's going to play zone because we knew we needed to drive this zone. It wasn't about shooting nothing to do with shooting you have to drive a zone we wanted to drive the ball in the paint versus the zone and having cam bobby and rj with ezra and brandon keeps the court a little bit more open and gives you a chance to drive so i thought that that was the best we were pretty confident they would start in the zone tonight
based on what they did versus Wake Forest. And they did it, and, and I thought that that was effective for us, allowed us to get off to a good start offensively. How do you think Cam is transitioning to his role two games under his belt? I think he's re transitioning great. I think our team is very excited about him. I think uh, they've welcomed him. I think Cam, we know he's a really good offensive player. When people forget, he can really defend. Uh, in the Florida game, he was very good on defense. This game, he started on Robinson, who was as hot as any guard in the country coming in over the last five games. He was averaging 20 and eight. And so, and we had Cam on him to start. So Cam can really defend. I thought he did a great job. He can pass the ball very well. He allows us to be a very good passing team with Bobby out there and RJ and Brandon. I think all those guys can pass. And so what happened is, he came it over a couple times because he's still getting used to his teammates who he can throw the ball to when, understanding, that's normal. As far as him not making a three, zero concern about it. I know how great of a shooter Cam is. I see it every day in this gym. I see it every day in practice. That's gonna happen. They just haven't dropped yet, and that's just timing of getting back in. He's two games in, so uh, we love what Cam's doing. Coach, speaking of Cam, how does it feel now? It's been like such a cloud over the program, knowing whether or not he's gonna be able to play, and now finally the NCAA said, he can play for the rest of the year and everybody that's a two-time transfer. Yeah, you know what it does is it's almost exciting because you almost have like a new team. And what I mean by that is you're practicing every day. Think about this. Every day we're practicing, we are saying, is today the day we might get the call and Cam is eligible or is it not? So you, you don't just say, okay, Cam, you're not eligible. You can't be with the first group or second group. But you also can't put, you have to make sure everybody's ready. So when Cam gets that and that weight is off his shoulders, at least what it allows is this team, his teammates and the coaching staff to say, okay, here's what we got from now until the end of the year. And so we haven't had a chance to do that yet, whether it was because of injuries or because of the situation you're alluding to. And at least I believe now this will allow us to get that continuity that we've talked about in this room before that sometimes maybe this team has missed early in the season. So I'm excited about that. What do the next nine days look like for the program between now and the next game? Uh, next four or five days, the guys, heck, there might be some that are already on the, the, the they're already on their way out of town right now. And that's why this is a scary game because you know the guys and they, rightfully so. They, I'm so excited they get to be with their families and friends and they get to do that. So uh, guys will be gone for the next few days. After Christmas, we'll come back and we'll hit it right away. There is no slow roll back into it. So right after Christmas, they, you know, they get a break right now. They come back. We'll get going and we'll get ready for East Tennessee State. And I know the coaching staff will be getting ready for East Tennessee State right away. But the program, the guys well deserve time with their family and friends, and I'm happy for that. Andrew Oaks. Uh, Callum with a spot in the second half there. Update on him. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, Nate came to me and said he wasn't feeling well. And he said, I don't know if he's available. And that's it. And, you know, I think it's probably, it's going around right now. I think it's going around everywhere. And there's so, I'm sure, it was something like that. But I don't have an update. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you.